all right um hi guys good afternoon um i hope you are able to see me hear me and also see the screen uh, if you can see everything and hear everything fine send a hi good evening yes um something in the chat so that i know the setup is fine and we can get started perfect uh, great so assuming that um, everybody is doing good I think a lot of people are still joining in, but I think we can get started. So before we jump into the agenda and the topic for the day, there are a, a couple of quick things that you need to know. Uh, again, number one is that the repository has been updated with everything, right? So if I just show you the repository, um, I have added everything till the previous session. So if you see session 10 11 and 12 they are showing up at the top because github follows a numeric scheme so you can see after session one you can see 10 11 12 and then the rest of the sessions so everything that we have covered in these sessions has been uploaded to the repository including all the recording links right? so the links for all the previous sessions are also available in the github repository uh, so this is the first thing that you need to know. So again, all the code that we had written, uh, you know, everything that we have done in that case, uh, or, you know, in the previous sessions, I have uploaded everything. This includes all diagrams that I have shown. This includes the sample project report that I had shown. So everything that we have seen in the session, including the presentation slides, uh, everything is available over here, right? Again, I don't have access to the WhatsApp group. So please copy the link from the chat uh, if you can, or just take a screenshot. I've been sharing this in every session now, right? Uh, the second thing that you need to know, right, uh, is that there is one more assignment that has been added. So like I've been telling you, the deadline for the first assignment, which is HTML and CSS, is today. So after today, those submissions will not be considered, right? And today we have the second assignment ready for you. Let me quickly show you that one. So this is the first assignment. If you remember, this was basically uh, the table assignment. So I hope you have completed this one already. Uh, let me know in the chat if you have, right? But more importantly, the next assignment has also been added, which is again available in the GitHub repository. So if I just open the repository, and the last link here is JS assignment link. If you can see, so there's a new link that has been added JS assignment. Uh, you can just click on this one. And again, this will take you to the JavaScript assignment. Again, this assignment is a little different. So if I just open this up and complete, you can see this is a JavaScript application that you have to create. Basically it's HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript. And it's very simple. So what you have to do is you have to create this click me button. And when you click on this button, the background color changes to a random color. The background changes to a random color, right? So that is the um, assignment for you, right? So again, uh, you have to spend some time. We have di discussed how to modify CSS with JavaScript. We have discussed how to choose elements from HTML, the DOM tree, all of that. And we've also discussed how to detect a button click. So everything that you need to know for this assignment has been discussed in the session, right? So this is the next assignment for you, right? Which is this one. Again, you can refer to W3 schools, check out the documentation, uh, refer to other resources. That is completely fine, right? Again, uh, for people who are not able to log in, again, uh, I really can't help you with this. Please reach out to your point of contact. Uh, they could be in the WhatsApp groups, your college POC, and, uh, you know, they can assist you to access the platform. I really can't. All I can give you is the link, and the link is already there. Again, it is available in the uh, GitHub repository. So, again, I've been telling this over and over again. As long as you have link to the GitHub repository, you don't have to worry about anything else. Right? Everything is available in the repository itself. So the only link that you need to have is the link to the repository. Everything else, including recordings, all the PPT, all the code snippets, all the assignment links, LMS link, everything is available over here in the repository itself, right? So again, please make sure that you um, do this assignment. For this, again, we will give you a few days 
probably a week or so and you should be good what i will do is i will also quickly show you a demo of the assignment so that you better understand um exactly what needs to be done i have also shared the exact assignment link in the chat as well so you, you can again please open that up bookmark it save it copy it um, do whatever you know you need to do in order to uh, access it later now let me quickly um, try to open up that one uh, project so i'll quickly show you right um, what needs to be done so just give me a minute let me just open it up i have it somewhere in my system this one right here it is so i'll just open it up in the browser this is what you need to do it's very simple right so this is the output you don't have to create the menu and all just the uh, main section which is the body section what this does is if i click on this button you will see it changes the background color to a random color it changes the body background to a random color and that color is displayed over here we have talked about different color schemes we know button clicks we know how to detect body html using javascript and we also know how to modify the style with css so we know everything that we need to know and this is basically what the project is every time you click on a button a random color is generated and the body background changes to that color and that color becomes visible in html over here right so this is your assignment that you have to do and yes i hope that demo uh, makes you or helps you understand it better right yes so that's basically the assignment again let's now get back to the session so that's basically everything that i wanted to show you before we start so again all the content that we need require has been updated in the repository it's all up to date now and also the next assignment link has also been added over here js assignment link right this is the assignment that you need to now create right so this is something that you can work on and again you can you know uh, spend some time with the documentation to see how you can get that random color that is going to be a challenge for you right so that's the that's the basic uh, setup right and yes the first project kumar was the table assignment or the first assignment was the table assignment so that's given here as well this is the first one and then this is the second assignment so these are the two different assignments uh, that you have to do again the first assignment is already done the deadline is today so after today we will not accept any submissions for the first assignment you can now start working on the second assignment right so yes that's basically it again i have provided with screenshots right you can see there are screenshots so you can try to match this exactly right which means that there is this heading with a black background there is this button with a border so try to follow the exact style and everything exactly as shown uh, in the screenshots the submission process is again going to exactly be the same at the submission title upload your html upload your css and submit that's it this is the same layout so um, pantesh there are no two layouts here there is only one layout i was just showing you what happens when you click the button so when you click me when you click on that button it basically changes the background so both screenshots belong to a single layout we don't have two different layouts this is just before and after so before if we have this then after you click on the button it changes to something like this that's that's basically it right so again it's the same setup you upload your html you upload your css and then you go ahead and you submit it again you will see zero marks which is fine it's going to be graded manually so while submitting you will see zero marks that's okay uh, but you still have to submit it right again the deadline for this can also be a week right a week so again we will uh, have the deadline as next friday so that's till till next friday you have for this assignment and by then we'll give you the next assignment which will be on react right so now uh, today is the last session that we will have on javascript at least the basics and then we will jump into react and then again we'll have a more discussions on javascript with react but today we'll try to wrap up the basic javascript and then you know we'll we'll get to uh, react as well uh, again so people who have problems i think deepika you are putting in the chat please reach out to the support team uh, you have the support email there is a whatsapp group there are point of contacts assigned to you 
so please reach out to them and they will help you out i really can't help you with login issues i don't have access to any of that right so please reach out to the concerned person and they will assist you um coming to the project part again so we'll talk about the project on monday right uh, the assignment is called javascript assignment right uh, i have already given the link in the chat let me put the link one more time so people who want the assignment links again i have put this in the chat once again please get it from there uh, regarding the projects we will have a discussion on monday right so then we'll talk more about it and again um, you know we'll start with that i am assuming that by now um, the abstracts and the topics have been sent to you right but uh, again if not let me take an update on that and i will let you know on monday so again if you haven't received abstracts or if you haven't received the team distribution yet let me uh, get in touch with the team we can discuss this again on monday right uh, perfect now coming to the topic for the day so let's quickly jump back to our slides here right uh, zoom link is working fine there are people on zoom as well you just have to log in with your gmail so i think that's a necessary step the team has put in place so please click on sign in to join please use the same google account that you have used for tap tap and you should be able to log into Zoom. This is for people who are on YouTube Live, not for you guys. Uh, but yes, so if you are on YouTube Live and I see their uh, chat saying Zoom is not working, it is working. That's where the session is coming from, right? It's being um, broadcast broadcasted through Zoom. And we have a lot of people on Zoom as well. Uh, but then again, I think you have to log in this time to access the session. So please log in and uh, please sign in i have joined the same way you can use the same email that you have used for tap tap and you should be able to log in um, to zoom if it's not opening again it's fine youtube live is fine uh, it's being live telecasted there as well so as long as you're on either of the platforms you should be good don't worry about that right oh, perfect so now coming to today's agenda so let's take a quick look at where we are what we have covered so far and then uh, we will jump to today's session, right? So again, in the previous session, we have been talking about this document object model, right? This is what we started our discussion on. And we have seen how the browser will convert an HTML uh, document into a tree. We call it the DOM tree. Now tree is a data structure. So if, if you have learned programming, you will know, or if you have learned data structures and algorithms, you would know that there is something called a tree data structure. We'll not get into that. But this is the same data structure that we also use to arrange files and folders in our operating system. But again, the point is the browser will automatically convert the HTML um, document to a tree that looks something like this, right? So we start with the root element. This is typically the you know uh, HTML tag. Then we have the head and the body. And then inside the head, we have title link meta. In the body, we have a bunch of other things. So this is automatically done by the browser. We don't really have to worry about it. But what we do need to be careful about is the way we structure our code, right? Because the way we structure our code in that exact same way, the browser is going to convert it. So again, you can see here, there is a div which contains one element and then there is a link. Link contains attribute and text. Right? Those are the values inside the link. But again, either way, uh, the idea is that this is a tree that the browser creates. And then based on this document object, we can access everything, right? So we have seen all of those things as well, one by one. We have seen how to select HTML elements through the document, which was document dot. Uh, we have seen get element by ID. We have seen get elements by tag name, get elements by class name, uh, query selector. We have seen so many different ways to select what we want. Right? That's the first step. Once we select that, the next step is to modify that content. So to access HTML content, we can use inner text. You can use inner text or inner HTML. And then to modify CSS, we have dot style. So element dot style and then dot property in camel case, right? in camel case. So that's how we can work with this. So again, that's how we modify the CSS. And then we have seen event handling. We have seen how to detect a button click, how to detect on hover, how to detect double clicks. Right? We have seen a bunch of examples. So again, a button click um, for this, we need to put an HTML attribute called on click. So on click, something will happen. So we put on click, then we create a function in the JavaScript code and we connect the two. That's how this works. 
right? So that is our event handling bit. We'll discuss this a little more later today as well. And then we have alerts and prompts. So we have seen these pop-up boxes. Alert shows up when the page loads and prompt shows up after the alert. So alert is usually the most priority. It is the first thing that shows up no matter where it is in the code. Alert will typically be the first uh, pop-up that shows up and only after you interact with the alert, you can load the rest of the page. So everything else will be pending. It will be kept on hold until the alert has been interacted with. Right. So that's the setup in terms of alerts and prompts. Now, today we are starting off by talking about this thing. And then remember, I told you that we are going to create this to-do list style application. So this is our main focus for today. We'll spend a lot of time on this today because this is where we'll put everything together. We will use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, everything uh, to create this mini project kind of a thing. But before we can do this, we have to understand one more thing which is how do you create new elements? See, because every time we want to add a new item in the list, we have to actually create a new item. Right? So that is what we'll first discuss. And then we'll take a look at the project. Right. So let's jump into VS Code and see how this can be done. So let me just open the folder again so that the code stays in one place. And again, I'm starting from scratch. So let's create an index.html. I'll put the template in. I'll make styles.css, I'll make scripts dot or other script.js and let's quickly connect the three. So link, this is styles.css, then the last line in the body will be script source equal to script.js. We know this already, right? We have done this so many times. Now, what we want to do is we really don't want to do anything with HTML at this point of time. What we want to do is we want to be able to create a new element and then show it on the screen using JavaScript. So that's what we'll discuss first, right? So this is create a new element. Again, this is how we write comments in JavaScript, double slash. This is a comment in JavaScript. Now let's let h1 is equal to or heading is equal to, we can say document dot. There's a function called create element. It is as simple as this, very simple, create element. And then we have to pass which element we want to create. So we are saying document dot create element H1. That's it. This line of code will create a new heading in JavaScript. Very simple, create element. And then we don't have to put HTML tags. We just have to put which element H1, P, L, I, U, L, image, audio, whatever we have discussed, everything will work. Now, the next thing is how do we actually put this on the screen? So in the chat, let me know quickly, how can we detect the body? What we want to do is we want to put this H1 inside the body, ready? inside the body here. So how do we do this? Well, first up, we need to select the body. We need access to the body in JavaScript in order to do this. So can you tell me in the chat, how can we select the body from the HTML tree or the DOM tree? I have put the first line and body is equal to. Now you have to write the rest of the code. What can we do to select body from the document? Document dot get element by tag name. Perfect. So we can say get element by tag name and the tag name that we are looking for is body. This is the correct way to do this. For people who are saying document dot right, you are absolutely wrong. Uh, we don't want to manipulate the body. We don't want to recreate the HTML document. We want to choose body from the screen. I was very specific in the instruction. So for people who have prior JavaScript knowledge, document dot right is the wrong answer. We don't want to write anything to the document. We want to read the body from the tree. So it is document dot get elements by tag name body. Now the next step after we have access to the body and this will again be a collection, right? So we need to access the first index because there is only one body on the screen. So body of zero dot. And then the next function is append child. That's it. Append child and heading. So what this will do is append child is going to attach this particular child, which is heading this new element that we have created heading to the body. Okay, so this is how we can add it to the screen. Again, first up, we want to choose where do you really want to add the heading. 
So this can be any tag, right? This can be a section, a div, a ul, wherever you want to add the new element. And then we say append child. Now, if you open this up right now, we will actually not be able to see any output because there is no content in the heading. So can you tell me in the chat, how can we add content to this heading? Which value do we change in this heading so that we can modify the HTML content that is available on the screen? So again, let me know in the chat. Let's put that in and then we'll open it up. Perfect. We have two options. Rather, there are three options, but uh, inner text is the most precise. So we can say heading dot inner text and we can just change it. Let's say this is new and this is coming from JavaScript. This is it. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and run this. So I will right click open with live server. This should hopefully open it up as you can see and we get the heading on the screen. This is new. Now what you need to realize or understand is that this heading is not available in HTML. If we see the HTML code, there is nothing inside the body. There is nothing inside the body. So effectively what we have done is we have created a dynamic heading or a new element using JavaScript and then using JavaScript itself, we are adding it to the screen, right? So these methods are going to be super important for us for the project. We need to first create a new task every time. And then once the task is created, we have to show it on the screen. This is very important, right? Perfect. Now, once this is discussed, let us quickly move to our task application. So let me show you the output once again, so that we understand what needs to be created. Right. So this is the output. Again, we'll not try to create everything, but we'll try to create, you know, first up, let's create basic addition. Then we'll do some CSS styling and all of that so that we re recap that as well. But let's focus on a simple, uh, first we'll have an input field, a button, and then we'll try to show the tasks on the screen. That will be our first step, right? So again, for this, we need a couple of things. First up in the HTML, let's create a section. This can be called let's say input area, something like this, right? Input area. We, we will use it later to style it, not right now, but still it makes sense to, you know, create it now itself. Then we have input task equal to text. Let's give this an ID as well. Let's call it new task input. Again, this is basic HTML. Again, so Arvind, what I've just shown you literally is what we are going for the project. So he's asking why we need to create a new element. Because if you look at this project, every time the user clicks on the add button, we have to create it. We cannot do that with HTML. So we need to do it with JavaScript. That is why we need to create a new element because we want to add dynamic interaction to the page. We cannot do this with HTML. We need JavaScript. Every time the add button is clicked, we want to create a new task. That is why we have discussed what we have discussed just now. In a lot of real world cases, when we select something on the screen, something should change. Something should interact. That's the setup. So we have the input field. Next up, let's create a button. Let's call it add task. And let's give this button an ID as well. So let's add task button. Right? Done. Uh, so these three things are done. We have created a section. One is input, then button. Right? And then we can go ahead and uh, see the output on the screen quickly. So let's go ahead and check it. Right. So again, I will just head back to Chrome and see we have two things. We have this input field and this add task button. Perfect. Now what we want to do is first up, we want to select both of these things in JavaScript so that we can access them. We want to read the value that the user puts in the input field. And then we want to add a event or add a function to the button click. So every time the button is clicked, we should be able to perform some action. Action, right. So for this, of course, we need access to both of those things here in JavaScript. So let's say let input, let new task input is equal to, we can say document dot get element by ID because we have given ID, right. And then the ID is going to be the same new task input. So this is our ID. Then we can also choose the button. So let's call it add task button again, document dot get element by ID. And task button. Done. Right? This is how we have selected both of these things in JavaScript now. 
Next up, what we want to do is, well, we want to read the value of the input field. How can we do this? Let's check. So let me go back to our developer tools. Let's say we don't really know how to do this. So what we can do is we can just focus on the developer tools here, right? We have the developer tools. Let's try to type something in and let's select that particular element on the screen. So I will choose the input field, right? And let us try to type something over there. So let's say we are typing something. Now, how do we figure out which attribute stores this value? Well, let's try to put this in the console. So what we can do is we can say, for example, every time the button is clicked, we want to display the input value, right? So there is an attribute here called value, V-A-L-U-E. That value attribute can give us access to this, right? So what we can do is we can say function add task. Before we add any task, what we want to do is just read the input and show it on the console, show it in the console. So what we can do is we can say let task name is equal to new task input dot value. This is how we can access the HTML attribute, just like we have inner text, just like we have inner text, we can access the value. Then what we can do is we can say console dot log task name. So this way we are going to read this uh, or show this console. Finally, to the button, we can say on click is equal to add task. So what we're doing here is when the button is clicked, we will call add task function. This add task function is going to read the input value, which you can see dot value and then show that in the console. So hopefully every time we type something and click on the button, we should be able to see what we are typing in the console. Let's check. So I will type in hi at task. You can see we get hi. Let's add a couple more things at task. You can see we get the latest text from the input. This is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we need. What we need now is we need to store this somewhere, right? So let us create an object. We've already discussed how object works. So let's say let all tasks, this is our object. It can be empty for now, right? Then what we can do is we can add a new item, right? So how does this work? Well, let me quickly recap as well. So we can say let task is equal to, and then this can take parameters, right? So we can have a value for task name. Then we can have completed. This can be a true false Boolean value. Right? So this is how a task could be. Now, when you want to store multiple tasks, we can actually create an array. So this is how we can store all tasks. Right? What we can do is arrays come in square brackets and we can have multiple tasks like these inside the array. And you can see here, this is the kind of a structure that we have. And this is exactly what we want to do, right? There are a lot of methods or functions that are available for us. So we have something like push and pop and add and append. There are so many different array functions that are available in JavaScript. So if you just head over to W3 schools and look for JS array, you will be able to find that there are so many methods as you can see. What we want is the push method. So this is what we want. This push method will basically add a new item to the end of the array. That's what we want basically. But again, you can refer to this documentation if you want to study this in more detail right in our case what we want is every time the add task button is clicked we want to add a new task to the array and we want the status to always be false the completed by default should always be false the task should never be marked completed by default so this particular thing is not needed we can create an empty array and then what we can do is once the button is clicked, we can say all tasks dot the method is push, right? So push, what do we want to push? Well, we want to push the task name. So that will be the task name and then the completion, this can be false. So we can push it like so. What this will do is this will basically uh, add a new task. How can we check? We can print it out. So let's say console, console dot log. Let's print out all tasks, right? Let me go back to the output. We'll come back to the code in just a minute. Let me just see first if this is working or not. So 
Now let's refresh. Everything is refreshed now. Let's say task one, add task. Let's check our console. So we have this object. You can see at zero. This is just like a collection that we get right when we run tag name, get elements by tag name, get elements by class name. We get a collection. So this is our own collection that we have created. You can see at zero we have completion false. Task name is task one. Now let us change it to task two and add task again. So in this case, you will notice this time we get two tasks, zero and one, right? So this is exactly what we needed. And just like this, we can keep adding as many tasks as we want. Right? So this time we can see we have three tasks, one, zero, one, and two. So again, remember I told you array indexes start from zero and they go till size minus one, right? So this is it. Let me tell you the code once again, so that you understand this better. So what we are doing here is very simple. In the HTML, we have just created one input and one button, one input field and one button. To the button, we have attached the on-click event listener. Now what is happening here is we are first detecting the input and the button from the screen. Then we have created a container or a collection called an array to store all tasks. So this is where we'll add everything the user wants to add. Now, how do we do this? Well, for that, we have created a function called add task. What this function is doing is this function is going to read the value that the user has given, which is the input value. How can we access it? We have a property or an attribute called value. This is only applicable to input fields. This is not applicable to text. So since it's an input field, we can access it using dot value. Then we are pushing the value to the array. So that's all tasks dot push. Push will add this task at the end of our list. That's it. Then we are just printing it out, which we don't really need. Now, the next step is to dynamically create a task or rather dynamically create an element and show it on the screen. And this is the challenging part. So how can we do this? Well, in HTML, let's make a separate section for this. So we can create an HR just to create a division between the two. And let's say this is task area, right? Now this can be a UL for now, an unordered list. Let's call it task list. Now what we want to do is for every task that the user is adding, we want to show a new list item on the screen, right? For every task that the user is adding, we want to show a new list item on the screen. Right? That's what we want to do. But this time we want to do it with JavaScript. So can you tell me how can you create a new list item? Can you write the code in the chat to create a new list item? We've just discussed this in the beginning of the session, right? How do you create a new element? Exactly. We can say document dot create element. And then the element that we want is li. This is how we want to do this. But we don't want to do it randomly. We want to do it for every new task. So we can do that over here. Whenever the user wants to add a task, and we can say document dot create element li. Let's call it let new task is equal to. Then we can say new task dot HTML. New task dot inner text rather can be the same setup task name. So new task dot inner text is equal to task name. And then where do we want to append it? Well, we can say document dot get element by ID. Remember the UL that we just created? Right? The UL that we just created is called task list. So get element by ID task list dot append child. And then we can go ahead and pass in this new task. This is it, right? So now what will happen is in addition to just adding a task, for example, task one, we should be able to see it dynamically down here as well. Right? Now we can change it to task two add task. This time we get two tasks. Then we say task three add task. We get the third task. This is what we wanted to build. At least this is a very basic version, the very first version of something like this, right? So this is how we can work with this. 
one more thing is we don't want this to show up every time. We want it to be cleared when the button is clicked. Well, how can we do this? Any thoughts? How can we delete the input value or, you know, basically clear the input value every time the button is clicked? So naturally we have to do something over here, but what do we need to do? Reset works for a form. Uh, so this is not a form, right? So reset is not going to work. We don't have a form tag. This is an input field, just an input field. There is nothing called clear as such. So I don't know what you mean by clear. There is nothing called clear. A pop is applicable to the array. It's not applicable to the input field. We don't want to remove the input field from the screen. So again, remove is also not going to work. Okay, let me tell you. So what we have to do is basically we just have to reset its value. So we can say new task input dot value is equal to empty. Done. And we have to manually, if we make it transparent, it will not be visible. It is not going to remove the content that is typed. Right? Remember I told you we can access the content through the value. So if we just change the value to empty, it would mean there is no content in the input field. That's it. Right. So let's see now, right? this is our first task and you can see it is gone. Let's go for task three, for example, as soon as you click on add task, you can see it clears out. This is the trick to that. This is how we can set that by just simply putting value equal to blank. That way we can remove the value from the screen, right? Perfect. So this is how we can work on adding a task. As you can see, the task is now working fine, uh, right? This is exactly what we wanted to do. Now, the next step, if you see the output is, uh, let me go back to the output here. The next step is we have a couple of different options. I will not make everything for you, but let us try to create the completed part. Maybe let's say that we want to add a completed option as well, uh, in addition to, you know, uh, the task. So for this, what you might want to do is let's, let's just say for now, that as soon as we click on the task, it is marked as complete. Just for simplicity, let us assume that we will just show strike through for completion. For right now, let us assume that we will just show strike through for completion, right? So for that, what do we need? Well, let's get another function, call it mark complete, right? And then this will require some parameter. What do we need? Well, we need the list item which we are clicking we need to know which task is being clicked right so again there are different ways to do this one way is to attach it directly to the tag the other is to make a generic function and then use it that way let us discuss attaching it directly to the tag right so every time we create a new li element what we can do is we can dynamically attach an event listener to it as well how can you do this? Well, it's very simple. We can say new task dot add event listener. New task dot add event listener. Which event do we want to listen to? We want to listen to the click event. So this is how we can add a new event listener, right? Add event listener. Again, you can read more about this in the documentation. Let us actually check it out. So this is another way of adding events um on the screen so let me just show you add event listener right so how this works is very simple we have to put in add event listener let's see some examples here and uh, yes as you can see we have add event listener and then we pass in which event and then a couple of other parameters right so for example i think this this looks good right so we have add event listener which event do you want to check and then what do you want to do when that event is performed right so this is basically what we have to specify there's a simpler syntax to this as well so we can use a simpler syntax like this but we don't want that for now we can go for the normal syntax right so let's go back to the code again what we're doing is we are saying add event listener now when the click event happens what do we want to do well we want to perform the mark complete function we don't really need to name the function as such. So we can just say function E. E is the current event that has been clicked or that has been received, right? 
Now, what do we want to do is we want to take the current event, go to target, e dot target. Let's say we want to change the style. So let's go for style. And so e dot target will give us the li that was clicked. And then we can change the style. Let's call it text decoration. And we want to make it strike through. Now this might work. This might not work. We are not really sure at this point. Let's check it out. So what we're trying to do is to the new task, which is our li that we have created, we are trying to attach an event listener on click. So when we click on this, what should happen is we want to read the current element that was clicked, right? And then we want to change the style to strike through. Let us double check first if text decoration has a value to strike through, right? So I think it's in text decoration only, but uh, yes. So it is line through, not strike through. So this is what we want to change, right? So it's called line through. Done. Let's check our output. So let me open up the to-do list. Let's say task one, add task. Let's add one more. So task two, let's add one more task three. And now let's try to click on one of them. You can see as soon as I click on it, it immediately gets a strike. So this is our mark complete. We are marking the task as completed at this point. However, we are only doing this on the screen. We are not really modifying the completion status as such. And you can see we are just adding this CSS on the screen. We are not changing the actual content in the array. We can do that as well. So again, once this event is performed, what we can do is we can say all tasks, right? Or, or all tasks dot new task. Again, there are different ways to do this. Right? We can find the value. We can check run a loop. We can do so many different things um, to get this done. You can see there are so many functions or methods that are available over here. But effectively, what we want to do is we can use find index. And so returns the index of the first element. And again, we can pass in some value over here. So effectively, we will have to run some array logic where we try to find the current task in the array. And then we can go ahead and we mark it as complete, right? So this is how the whole setup can be done. I have just shown you the CSS bit for now. And honestly, we don't really need the array for now because anyway, it will come in when we deal with the databases. So if I just remove that array line, which is the push part, uh, let me check, yes, this part. So we don't really need this, uh, right? The push part again is not really needed. We can just read the input from the screen, create a new list item, attach the event listener and show it on the screen. So this is everything that we really need to do, right? Let me just restructure this code better so that we understand what is going on. And uh, yes, there you go. So let me comment it out. So this is read input from the screen or other read task name from the screen. That's the first step. This is not needed. Let me put it over there. Right? This is for later when we work with databases. Then the second step is to create a new element for new task. So let's say create a, create a list item for new task. So this is the whole creation part. Then we are saying give li content, right? So give task name as li content or set task name as li content. That's what we're doing. Then we are displaying the li on the screen to so display li on the screen. This is that line where we are saying get the task list and append this to the last to the end of that list. Then we are saying attach event to mark complete. This is attaching an event handler to mark the task as complete. And finally, we are clear input seed for the next task. So this is everything that we're doing over here. It's very simple. It might sound confusing if it's very new for you, but it's very simple. We are doing one step at a time. Again, let me quickly tell you what is going on so that we can understand this better. The first thing that we're doing naturally is reading the input from the screen. So whenever the user types task one, we are detecting that value from here. Right? So as soon as we click on the add task button, 
which is this button, you can see this function will be called, right? As soon as this function is called, we are saying let task name is equal to new task input dot value. This is the first step. We want to read the task that the user has given in the input field. Once we get that, we are creating a new list item for this new task. So that's document dot create element. Now the list item is going to be empty. Right? At this point, it will create something like this, an empty list item. So what we want to do is you want to insert the value, the actual text. So that's what we're doing. New task dot insert text is equal to task name. So this will take the task name and add it to the li tag. So now the li tag has some value, some content to show on the screen, right? So again, at this point, the li will have some content to show. Then what we're doing is we are displaying it on the screen. How do we do this? Well, we are reading the current task list. So if you see in HTML, task list is this empty UL that we have. So we are reading this empty UL and then we are going ahead and appending the new task that we have created. So the new LI that we have created. So what this will do is this will go UL. It will add this LI right? it will add this LI inside the UL. And since it is the push function or append child, it will always add it at the end of the list. So if there is already one task, it will add it to the after it. If there's only one, it will add it after it. So it will always add it to the end of the UL. So this is what we are doing in that case, right? So again, I will just paste it here so that we understand what is going on. Then finally, the second step that we had was basically, uh, you know, attaching or adding an event listener. So we want to basically say task one is complete. If this is our HTML and we want to mark this as complete, we can click on it. As soon as we click on it, you will see the strike through the line through, right? So for that, we are using this logic. We are saying add an event listener, add a click event. So this is the same thing as saying on click in HTML. But since we are creating list item dynamically at runtime, we don't have it in HTML. So how can we put on click over there? We add the button, the button is always visible. That is why we are clicking on add task. We are click, we are adding on click over here because the button is always going to be visible. But since the LI is being created dynamically, we can't attach on click in HTML. So this is how we can do it in JavaScript. This is how we can do it in JavaScript, right? Perfect. Then what we're saying is get the current task, which is E dot target. So this E is basically the event, basically which element was clicked. That will be E which element performed the event. So we know that this is going to be an element. So we are saying the current item, whichever was clicked, change its text decoration to line through. So that way, if you click on the first task, it makes the first task line through. If you click on the 10th task, it will click the 10th class line through. It will make that change. And so even if you have 100 tasks, it will never get confused because we are using this E. E is dynamic. It will tell us which element was triggered or which element triggered the current event, click event, and which element was clicked, basically. That is what this E will tell us. So we are saying get the target of this event and change its style to line through, right? Finally, to make it easier for the user to enter the next value, we are saying clear the input field so that you can user can type the next task, user can enter the next task, right? So this is how the whole setup is. Yes, now there's a very good question in the chat. This is on YouTube live. Is that it actually allows for empty tasks as well, right? So if I just click click add task, you can see empty tasks can also be added, right? So for this, what we can do is there are two ways to handle this. Again, we can either go the HTML way, which is much simpler, or we can go the JavaScript way. So HTML way is very simple. What we can do is we can make the input field required. So there's a property called required. If we just put that in, then we cannot submit. So we can just say required equal to true, right? And this way, what will happen is it becomes mandatory for us to enter a value. But you will see in this case, it is not going to work because this works only inside of form, right? So only if the input field is inside of form, this will work. But right now it is not in the form. It's a random value. 
it's a independent field it's not inside a form so how can we do this when we have the value from the input field right so we can write a simple logic what we can do is we can say if right if the value which is task name dot length equal to equal to zero which means if the task is empty that is the only situation when the length will be zero we don't want to do any of this so if the task name dot length is zero we can throw some error on the screen otherwise only then do the rest of it right so only then do this we might want clear the field in both cases so we can just put that in as a common function now in this case what we'll do is we'll notice when we click on this button nothing is happening for now and when we start typing things in it works so this is again empty value will not work in this case so what we can do is we can actually uh, this is a typical thing we do it in a lot of applications as well we create a paragraph we get an id of error message right so this is usually empty and under the input field right then if the task name is zero we take that paragraph so again get element by id get the error message paragraph and then we just add some inner text to it and we can throw the error here right please enter task name so this is something that we're telling the user and then we can also make this red in color so that can be a css thing we can say hash error message then color red just so that you know it adds that error impact on the screen so now you can see there's a little bit of a style change here because there is an empty paragraph in between uh, i'll tell you the fix to that as well but you can see it now says please enter task name and only when we enter the name it will uh, run now of course we also have to show and hide it right, so that uh, it is not always visible so what we can do is in the script right once the task is available then we can hide this so again we can say document dot get element by id dot style dot display equal to none so this will hide it from the screen in case there is no error message right? you can see if there is an if there is no task it says error we can type the error in and okay now this is interesting but anyway so my point is right what we can do is we can hide it when we are not working with it and otherwise we can definitely go ahead and show it so you can see when it's empty it's not printing out and then in all other cases this is definitely showing up so we can just change reset the content maybe to empty again so that is something that we can probably do this can become empty like so so again now that we do we have some value it's fine if you don't have a value we get the error you can see this works right so if we don't put any value it shows us please enter task name if you put a value it adds it to the list right so these are a couple of different things in which we can work with and again when you click on it it will mark those things as complete exactly what we want and we can keep adding as many tasks as we want to the list whatever task we click on only that task as you can see it will be marked as complete right so this is the proper of course not styled yet but you know css you can style it actually but this is how we can work with a task creation system right? or a simple to-do list application using html and javascript uh, also css this line through and all of this is done through css right now remember that there are a lot of um, you know different ways to do certain things for example what we have done here is we have kept it very basic right but if you notice or if you just look at the screenshot this is the same thing the exact same thing just uh, styled nicely right so instead of a blank input field we have some default um, you know text written it's called placeholder then we have this button styled differently then the task shows up in its own box there is edit button completed delete things like that let me also show you delete quickly and then edit is something that you can figure out it's very simple we just have to change the inner text uh, to the new text so it's actually very simple but let me show you delete so i want to focus on this only for today because this is putting everything together that we have seen so far this will wrap up our javascript discussion so that we can then start working with react so let's actually try to create delete first and then if time permits we can probably try edit out as well there is one more thing i want to show you but after we complete this 
right so now let's go to delete let us say that when we double click on a task we want to delete it right for now let us assume that we want to double click on the task so just like we have attached the event listener for completion we can mark another thing attach event to delete right this will be changing to dbl click that's double click in this case what we want is we want to remove this element from the screen so what do we want to remove well we have a function called document dot remove child right and then over here we have to pass in which element to remove so we can say dot target this should remove the element for us simple as that let's try i'm not sure if it will work just yet but let's see so i'm just adding some task single click to mark it as complete double click and this is not working you can see i'm double clicking on it it's not getting deleted right that could possibly be because we might have specified wrong arguments over here so let's check let's go to the mdn reference and see an example So you can see what we have to do is you have to say parent dot remove child. We can't generally say document dot remove child, but instead the parent that contains that element should be written. So we know that parent is this one. So just like append child, we have a function called remove child. That's it. Right. So in the same way that we're adding a child, we can provide which child to be removed. Right. That should do it now. Let's check. So single click to mark is complete. Double click and it's gone. Right. Again, let's try one, two, three. Let's delete the first one. It's gone. Double click. Let's delete the third one. It's gone. Double click. Let's delete this one. Again, double click and gone. So you see, it's actually very, very simple to work with this UI aspect of things, right? A lot of people um, think that this is very complicated and there's so much code that goes behind the scenes. Well, that is actually not the case. See, what we have written here is hardly 20 lines of code, right? If you include comments, it's actually 40, but there are more comments than code lines, right? So it's actually very simple to work with these things. Now, of course, you can also try to build the edit functionality in a similar way. It is the same thing. All you need to do is get the new value from the user and just inner text that value. That will change it. Very simple. So let us attach one for edit. So for edit, what do we want to do? Well, this is going to be tricky. First up, which event do you attach for edit, right? Again, there are different events that we can target. Um, let us say in this case that we just say hover. So if you hover over it, it should edit, right? So we can say instead of double click, let's go. So mouse, mouse over. The event is on mouse over. Here, we don't have to say that. We just have to say mouse over. What should we do when the mouse over happens? Well, again, this is where it will change. So we want to read the value. So for that, we can create a new input field if we want. So typically in a real world application, what will happen is when you click on this edit button, a new input field will open up that input field. You have to type the new value and that will change it. Right. So that is the real scenario. But since we already have an input field, let's just read the value from there itself. We already have it. It's called task name. So what we can do is we can just use the same value for now. So it's going to be very simple. We can just say e dot target dot and then inner text. And then what value we want? Well, we want the value, which is the same value as task name. So we can just read this again. Uh, that's new task dot value, not this line. Uh, yes, this one new task input dot value. This is what we want. So we can just say this here. That's it. And then as soon as we, uh, you know, uh, do this, the value should change. Let's check. So this is again tricky because we are trying to work with the existing setup. Like I said, ideally, we should create a new input field for edit and, you know, get the value from there. But let's say there is task one, which I have added. I will add a new value. Then I will just hover over it and this is not working. As you can see, click is working. Double click is working, but hover on mouse over is not working as expected. So again, let's check. So we have mouse over and function e, e dot target dot inner text. 
so this again could be a problem this is fine i think e dot target dot inner text what we can do is let's try to read which e is being which uh, you know which particular value is being read and then we can also check if this is available or not. so let's so log two value so one is the input value and then the inner text so let's see okay let's go to the console and check so here you will see it says e dot target dot inner text is not a function we are able to read the value correctly but it is telling us that this particular inner text thing is not going to work out as you can see it says e dot target dot inner text is not a function so this is not working for us right probably let's just say e dot inner text and again i am sure this is also not going to work but we can always so Again, you can see this is not working and this time around we don't even get any errors. So again, this is tricky. What we have to do is ideally, like I said, we should create a new button or a new setup for something like this. So this is a challenge for you. Uh, try to get this done, right? Uh, if you if you spend some time on this, you can take a screenshot of this output. Uh, this is also available in the slides, right? So you could probably try to create something like this. So we have discussed how to add a new task. We have discussed completion. We have discussed deletion. So I've already shown you three out of four things. The edit is a challenge for you. So 75% I've made, 25% is a challenge for you. So try to get it done whenever you can find some time, right? Now, um, quickly, let's take one round of questions at this point. So I will just take questions from the chat. Again, I have YouTube live open. I have Zoom open. So I have uh, all the chats open, right? And uh, okay, let's see. So it says line 25 again. Uh, yes, so I've already explained it, right? What we're trying to do is attach a value. So when we create a list item, it's going to be empty. And then using this inner text, we are attaching the value like this in the middle. So we are modifying the text content of the list item. Mm. Right. Perfect. So yes, if there are any questions, let me know. I have Zoom open on the side. I have YouTube live open as well. So I'm checking questions on both chats. Uh, if you have questions and you are in any of the places, let me know. Uh, right. Perfect. So I don't see any questions right now. Uh, fine, we can move to the next part. Uh, yes, I will put this code on GitHub as well after the session is done. So yes, I will give the code to you after GitHub, uh, after the session is done. I will put it on GitHub. Now, uh, this V2 basically stands for add event listener, which is something that we've already discussed, right? So we just... Um, Again, you don't have to worry about Zoom not working. If you're on, on YouTube live or on Zoom, either way, it's the same session. So as soon as you are on one of, as long as you are on one of those platforms, you should be good. Uh, but yes, so like I was saying, this add event listener setup, this is basically um, the second way of adding events. Right? So that's event handling V2. Then the next most, the next topic, uh, that we have to quickly look at again we will not discuss this in a lot of detail today this will come up in a lot of later sessions um, is called an api right so uh, api uh, is short for application programming interface this is basically a way for different applications uh, or two or more applications to talk to each other right so let me give you a simple example let us say that you have um, you want to buy a 10 rupee chocolate. Let's say you want to buy a chocolate and you go to the shopkeeper and you give him a 10 rupee pen. So you give him a 10 rupee pen and you expect him to give you a 10 rupee chocolate in return. It's not going to work, right? Obviously, it's not going to work. He's not going to take, um, you know, something else other than money to give you the chocolate. Naturally, that is how it works, right? So in this case, that is exactly the same setup where APIs work in applications, 
right? So again, what is happening here is we need a common language, a common agreement that both parties agree on that this is a rupee note. This is a 10 rupee note. And when both of you agree on the fact that this is a 10 rupee note, you can get whatever is equivalent of that money, right? So in the exact same way, when it comes to uh, web applications, let us say that you want to integrate a payment gateway. Let us say you want to integrate login with Google. Uh, let us say you want to, um, you know, add any external application. It could be a database. It could be, um, you know, login, sign up, authentication, anything like that. Your application needs to talk to Google or your application needs to talk to the other application using some common understanding like a currency, like rupees in our case, right? So that currency is what we call an API or rather that currency is actually JSON. That's the next topic. But the mediator, the communication happening between languages is called an API, right? Let me give you another example. Let us say that you go to a restaurant to have food, right? So you go to a restaurant, you take a table and you sit there. Now the waiter will come to you with the menu. Right? The waiter will come to you with the menu. You can read the menu. You can tell what you want to the waiter. The waiter is now going to go to the kitchen, communicate your order and check when the order is ready. Once the order is ready, the waiter is going to bring it and serve it to you. Right. So this entire setup is exactly like how things work in the web application as well. The table, chair, the menu, wherever we sit, whatever we see, that is the front end of our application. Everything that is visible to us or accessible by us. Right. Then there is the back end, which in this case is the kitchen. So again, all the ingredients, all the dishes, all the cooking, everything that is being done, all of that is the back end. The waiter is the mediator between the two. Right? So the waiter will talk to the the front end, go to the kitchen, get the task done and bring it back to you. That is an API. So in this case, the waiter is the API. Right? Typically, when we create a web application, we have a separate front end, we have a separate back end and the communication between the two, like your table and the kitchen happens through the API, happens with the help of a mediator called an API. Right? API is short for application programming interface. Right. So again, when we create a front end, right, we will use API to connect to our database. That's how it will be. We'll also discuss how this works in more detail later. But today I just want to lay the foundation, just, you know, help you explain the concept. Let me give you a simple example. So typically what happens is whenever we are working on a web application, right, what happens is uh, we want dummy data. So in a lot of real world situations, we want dummy data to test our application out, right? For this, we have an API, we have an API called random user, okay? So there is this API called random user dot me. So if I just refresh this website a lot of times, just see what happens. I'm going to reload this one. You can see the details of the person are changing every time. So you have the name, email, birth date, uh, address, phone number. Of course, all of this is dummy. It's all fake data. But again, if I just refresh this, you will see that we get new data on every reload. You can see we get new data on every reload. So assume that you're creating a web application. Obviously, you want to test it for 100 users, 500 users, 5000 users even. So naturally, you will not want to sit and create 5000 accounts on your own you would want some dummy data that you can use. So that is what this particular link random user or this particular API lets us do. It gives us random data. How can we access this data? Well, we can go to random user dot me slash API, right? And on this link, if you notice, we get the data. Okay. So this is the data and this is a special format called JSON format. JSON is JavaScript object notation. Remember, we just created this when we were working on our task. We just created this. We said new task, task name and completion, true or false, right? So this is the kind of data that we get. And then again, every time we refresh, you can see the details will change. You can see this is Costi Antin, something like that. When I refresh, it will change to Alice. If I refresh, it changes to some Mary Louise, something like that. So this data can be accessed by us by 
connecting to this API endpoint. Now, there is a function that helps us do this. So it's called fetch. Right? JavaScript has something called fetch API. Again, it's a very uh, important or a very interesting method. We can directly use the syntax as it is to get this done, right? So let us let me quickly show you one simple example. So I'll just put it after the script, right? So let's just say get user data. And then we'll replace this with our API. So that's random user dot me slash API. And then we are saying await response dot JSON console dot log movies. It's fine. Let's call it users and change it to users. Now, what we're doing here is I put it in the wrong place there. So get user data. Let us attach this call to the button instead of add text. Right. So this time around, what should happen is every time we click on the add task button, let's see what happens. So I will click on add task and you will immediately see we get a new array, which is coming from the API. And you can see we get data of a person. You can see this data. This is some, uh, you know, some user, let's say the name. The name is Fanny Scashog, Miss Fanny Scashog. Let's click the button once again. And you will see we get another data item from there. Let's check. So this again is something different. This time the name is uh, Miss Juliet, Juliet Hubert, something like this, right? So now what we can do is we can obviously just get this data and put it on the screen as well. We can create an exact replica of what we saw on this website over here, right? We can just create a replica of this as well. So again, that is what an API is. And that is what JSON data is. So what we do is when we're working with JavaScript, we get the data that we want, and then we can convert it to a JavaScript format using this response.json. What this will do is this will convert the JSON into a JavaScript object that we can access. For example, we can say users.name. Let's just see one example so that we understand. Uh, let's just get one data piece. So we have results within results. We have zero, then we have name and then we have first. That's the name that we want. So we can say users, right? So users is the entire thing. Then let's go for its results. Then in the zeroth location, we have name dot first. Now, if we add task, you can see we only get the name out. Right? We only get the name of the person out on the screen. Now we know how to work with this, right? We've already created elements dynamically. So we can just combine what we know and quickly put that on the screen. So instead of a list item, now let's just try to put this same setup, but instead of the uh, LI, right? What we are now doing is getting dynamic data instead of a random data. So let's check, I'll click on add task. And you can see it says task name is not defined. That is correct. Uh, we should change that task name to this value. Right? So this is the task name and now it should be good. So you can see this time, every time we click on the button, a random user is fetched and we can get their value or their name on the screen, right? So this is what an API is. It allows us to connect to another application on the internet and get some data. Now the data format in which we are seeing this is called JSON. That's JavaScript object notation. So just like we have currency that we use for communication between two entities, communication between two web applications on the internet happens through JSON data. JSON is the most common one. There are other formats. We have something called XML. You know, we have a bunch of other um, things as well. But JSON data is the one that we use the most. So that is how this works. This is JSON. This is JSON data. And this is how we can get this done. So that's how this works, right? So we have API, we have JSON. And again, we'll discuss this in more detail eventually. We will talk about other things as well regarding or related to it. But then there are two methods that we have. Right? So we can take a JavaScript object, convert it to JSON. We can take a JSON object converted to JavaScript. So if you want to send something to an API, let us say that we want to send our task name to an API. So we can do that using this method called json.parse. So what json.parse will do is it will convert a JSON into an object, right? 
and then we have another method called stringify so what this will do is this will take a javascript value and it will convert it to json as you can see converts a javascript to json so these are two very important methods we are using it over here response.json will do json.parse only right so in a similar way right if we have json data we can convert it to javascript through json.parse and if we have javascript data we can convert it to json through json.stringify this json can be done in any language so if you're using php for example you can convert json to php object if you're using java you can convert json to java object if you're using python you can convert it to python etc 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 so every programming language supports json right so you can go to and from json and that is why it is the standard of communication so no matter see when we take another application for example let us say google now google is not going to tell us what technology they are using and google is not going to tell us okay we are using this language so please send data in this language they might be using any any custom language we are using any other custom language so how does this communication happen that is exactly where json comes in right? so json works with every programming language it can go back and forth in any language that is why we uh, use json so no matter which language our backend is using no matter which language the other application is using we can still establish communication with that other application through json right so again this is something that we will explore in more detail later but we have seen a lot of different things in this session first up we have created our mini project so for that, that we have seen how to create new elements with html then we have seen how to attach event listeners we have seen how to read values from input fields uh, we we have seen how to add a task, edit a task, delete a task, all of that. Then we move on to the next part. We have talked about what an API is. We have talked about what JSON is. And I have shown you an example of random user API. There are other APIs which I will also show you later with time. Uh, but yes, so that is the setup. Right? This is what we know or rather this is what we need to know in terms of front end JavaScript. We have now seen how to access or modify HTML with JavaScript. We have now seen how to add or edit CSS with JavaScript. And we have seen how to fetch data from an API using JavaScript. This is everything that we need to know for the front end. From the next session onwards, we are going to start our discussion on React, right? So React is a framework. Uh, they call it, they call themselves a UI library. We call it a framework for creating SPAs, we call single page applications, SPAs. So applications like LinkedIn, applications like YouTube, Netflix, all of these applications are created with React. Right? There is official documentation to prove that these applications have been written or created using the React framework. So that is what we'll be discussing from the next session onwards. Right. So again, I'll tell you how to set it up. I'll tell you everything you need to know about it. Uh, from the next session, which will be on Monday. Now, before we wrap up, of course, let me quickly tell you, we'll also have questions in a minute. But again, there are two, three important things for people who did not join on time. The first thing is that there is a new assignment that has been uploaded in the repository. Uh, you might have received the email as well. But just in case, if you did not, I am putting the link in the chat so that you have access to it. So please don't tell me later that you did not receive any email. Okay, I am putting the link in the chat. Okay, and this particular link is the assignment link. Okay, I've just sent it in the chat on both YouTube live as well as on Zoom. So again, for people who joined late, I already told this in the beginning, there's a new assignment that has been added. It looks like this. What you need to do is you have to create a project, right? So this particular assignment, is basically a color flipper. What that means is when you click on this button, a random color should be generated and the body background should change. And you can see there are two screenshots. So if this is the first one, then once you click on the click me button, it should change the color and change it to the second, for example, something like this. Right? So that is the assignment. It's the same submission process. You can um, use the submission title, put the title, put your HTML file, put your CSS file, put your JavaScript file, attach all the files and then submit it. The same process like the earlier one. 
the previous assignment which was the table assignment that is due today so the last day for that assignment is today this assignment will be due next friday okay this assignment will be due next friday right so yes that is the assignment uh, bit and i'll just show you a quick output of the assignment as well just in case uh, you know if you just want to see uh, how this looks like on the screen so this is the project when I click on a button, it should just change. You can see it should just change the background color on every button click. And the same color should be visible over here as well. So you have to figure out how to randomly generate this color. That's it. Everything else we know. We know how to choose the body. We know how to detect the button click. We know how to uh, change the inner text. We know all of those things. All you need to do is just uh, figure out how to generate this color, how to generate this background color. Again, I have put the link several times on YouTube as well as on Zoom. So please don't ask me for links anymore. Scroll through the chat. You have the link over there. The link is also available in the repository. So again, I've been saying this enough times now. You can just go to the repository and over there you will find everything that you need. Right. All the session material is also updated. You can see up till session 12. I have updated everything, right? Then I have also updated all recording links for all sessions. And I've also added the assignment link over here. So please go to the repository. Again, don't tell me you did not receive the email. Don't tell me you did not receive it on WhatsApp. I am sharing it right now live in the session. I have put it in the Zoom chat. I have put it in the YouTube chat, which means you have received the assignment. Right. If you are here, you have received the assignment. Don't tell me no email, no WhatsApp, no problem. This is the link on the screen. Take a screenshot. I have put this in the chat also so many times. So you have received the assignment. Again, I am putting the link in the chat. Please don't tell me that you did not receive emails. Please don't tell me you did not receive it on WhatsApp. I have shared it in the session. You have it now. The deadline for this assignment is next Friday next friday right? one week to get this done right again for people who are asking about project details and abstract we will discuss this on monday i have a call with the team so once i get an update on this i will let you know um yeah right so we'll do all the project discussions on monday so please be patient till then and we'll talk about it over there uh perfect now let's quickly switch to our questions so as always there are three questions for you here is the first one um, please read this carefully and put your answer in the chat. Then we'll discuss what the correct answer is and move to the next question. Again, I have put the link so many times in the chat. Please scroll up. Please scroll up on Zoom or YouTube and you will find the link. Um, again, it's in the repository. So please get it from there as well. But yes, you can put the answer in the chat and then we'll uh, discuss. Okay, so the correct answer to this is option two, right? So the purpose of add event listener, like we have seen, is to register an event handler. We have already discussed this, right? The next question is this again. So uh, we have also discussed this. You can take a minute, put your answers in the chat, and then we'll discuss the correct answer. Right. So the correct answer here is option uh, three again. Right. We have discussed this. The 
uh, answer is json dot parse right and then this is the third question again for people who are saying about the um, abstracts we will discuss it on monday so please wait till then and again i will help you out only on i can help you out only in the next session before that you will receive the abstracts don't worry so by this weekend you will be getting all the abstracts um by mail again right so yes please keep a track on your emails please check them regularly uh, so that whenever we send it out you can get them right uh, and yes the correct answer to this one is fetch okay so uh, we've already discussed this as well and yes again we um i think some abstracts have already been sent and if they are not if you haven't received them you will get them very soon we have already started sending abstracts as well right perfect so the correct answer here is fetch and that brings us to the end of this particular session and again here is the session title just in case uh, just for people who are asking about it this is the title of the session today and like i said we will be starting with the next um, major topic which is react right by monday so monday we'll discuss quickly on the project bit and then we'll work on the react part right uh, again so harsha if you want to change the css it's basic css you can apply it to list item and every li style will automatically be applied when we add a dynamic element as well and so whatever general styles are there they are applicable to everything um, you know even if they are uh, dynamic yes i'll just ask the team to send the feedback links just hold on for one more minute please make sure you fill the feedback in before you leave and yes uh, the team is just sending the link as well so let's just hold on for a minute i'll also put the link in the chat so feedback yes the link is already in the chat and right? thank you so much uh, so yes uh, please make sure you fill the feedback links and uh, yeah that's basically it for this one have a great weekend uh, see you guys on monday bye bye